Hi, everyone. The feature race on Saturday at Santa Anita is the $100,000 California Distaff Handicap for fillies and mares, six and a half furlongs down the unique Santa Anita hillside turf course. That's the first feature. The second feature is actually a series of races, races five through 10. It's mandatory pick six payout day on Saturday at Santa Anita. And the jackpot going into Saturday is $266,000. The new money in the pool will be well beyond $1 million. The sequence is a little bit muddled. There are four maiden claiming races in that pick six sequence and two turf routes for claiming horse, claiming caliber horses as well. Not the strongest program ever assembled at Santa Anita, but it's mandatory payout day. So you might want to consider taking a shot on races five through 10. We're going to talk about the California Distaff Handicap, and it's race number three. Let's take a look at the lineup. It's a small field of five, California bred, fillies and mares, six and a half furlongs down the hill, and the expected favorite is the 125-pound high weight. Number three, Legs Galore. She is expected to be making her final start in California. I say expected to be. She's shipping to, to Kentucky in a couple of weeks after running on Saturday, she will be sold at auction on November 6th. And I guess there's a chance that her new owners could return her to California to resume competition at age six, but she's a five-year-old mayor. She's won nine out of 17, earned more than $674,000. She's the horse to beat for reasons that we will talk about in a minute. Field of five, not a great race on which to wager. Second choice in the race, likely to be number four, Eddie's New Dream. Harper's Gallop is a long shot. Clean Karma is a long shot also. Phil D'Amato trains two of the five, Legs Galore, the expected favorite, and the long shot three-year-old, number two, Rose Dawson, who's, if you look at her form, it's not really not that great. He believes that she does best in one-turn races. And even though I know she's a stakes winner in the second start of her career in January, but he's backing her up from a mile to six and a half down the hill. She's going to be rallying from behind. I'm talking about number two, Rose Dawson. I can't make a case for her. And even though D'Amato did not say this, I suspect that Rose Dawson is in this race just to guarantee that the race fills four legs galore. Okay, let's talk about some contenders. In my opinion, there are three main ones. And one of them might offer a little bit of a price. I'm referring to number one, Clean Karma. She's a five-year-old mare by Clubhouse Ride. In her first start down the hill, it was in June at Santa Anita. She outran her price at 48 to one and finished second. After that, trainer Craig Lewis stretched her out to for a couple of mile races because there's no place else to run. But last time out in an entry level allowance, Clean Karma on October 2nd was making her second start on the hill. Let's take a look and see what happened with Clean Karma in the pink reddish silks on the outside. 40 to one in a one other than allowance. Edwin Maldonado aboard. She's going to switch leads right there at 40 to one. She's working hard to get up close home. Does she get there? Yeah, she does. At odds of 40 to one, Clean Karma sprang the upset. In hindsight, and that's all this is, 2020 hindsight, she should never have been 40 to one. She was probably a 10 to one type of Philly mayor in that race, but betters made a mistake. I made a mistake and she went off at 40 to one. The downhill turf course at Santa Anita is a horse for course layout. Once a horse has established good form on that course, they have a right-hand turn, a left-hand turn, they cross the main track. Once a horse has run well on that course, you always should at least consider that horse the next time he or she runs down the hill. Well, we didn't do it with Clean Karma, and Clean Karma sprang a huge upset. There's a story going around the racetrack, and I don't know if it's true or not. I suspect that it is, that someone very close to the Clean Karma camp made $60,000 in winning wagers. Profit, $60,000 when Clean Karma sprang that upset. It was based on exotic wagers, win bets, exact as the whole ball of wax, and that better supposedly, not confirmed, made $60,000. Anyway, it was a nice score. Clean Karma is moving up in class from a one other than into a Calbred stake race. She's not fast enough on figures. She's not good enough on class. 
but she will be running late and have a sharp horse moving up in class. Those are often the best bets in all of racing. I picked her third, Clean Karma. She's sharp, she's good. And maybe if the favorite is vulnerable, she has a chance. And there are reasons to suspect that maybe legs galore is not worth backing at a short price. We're going to talk about her in a minute, but first let's talk about my second selection and the likely second choice in the race. And that's number four, Eddie's new dream. I'd mentioned earlier that this is a horse for course layout. Let's take a look at the last time that Eddie's new dream ran down the hill. And it was in March in the, in a Calbred stake, just like this. Eddie's new dream with the Ford Lee place trip. And she was three to one and she is trying to wear down Becca Taylor. Becca Taylor's a bulldog, but Eddie's new dream finally gets the best of Becca Taylor in deep push. You're never going to get there, but she finally does right on the shadow of the wire to spring an upset. That was the last time that Eddie's new dream ran down the hill. It was during the winter spring meet at Santa Anita and she went into some stakes races. She ran, actually ran in three graded stakes races since that race. Last time out, she finished nowhere in the grade two John C. Maybe her form looks a little muddled right now, but she's back doing what she has shown. She does well run down the hill. She's also taken a huge drop in class from a grade two turf route into a cow bred Philly mare steak down the hill. Eddie's new dream rallies from just off the pace and she has enough speed to keep the pace setter in her sights. Eddie's new dream, logical second choice in the race. She's the 122 pound second high weight in the field. The high weight and likely favorite is 125 pound legs galore. This is her final start, expected to be her final start in California. It is her last start before she will be sold November 6th in Kentucky. And legs galore is a tiger on the hill. She started twice on the hill. She's won them both. We're going to take a look at her most recent start on the hill. And it was way back in, well, it wasn't that far back. It was in May at Santa Anita. And Legs Galore, who does her best work up on the front end, she took the lead. She was one to two. She didn't exactly dazzle, but she got the job done. She was one to two and she won the misdirection stakes. In three subsequent starts, she ran in a grade one at Belmont. And then she also ran in a pair of five eights races at Del Mar, including her most recent start right here. She's supposed, supposed to win this race. She's the six to five favorite legs galore is for obvious reasons, class of the field, speed of the race. I was extremely disappointed that she did not win this race. That's her stable mate, Connie Swingle up late to defeat her. Connie Swingle also trained by Phil D'Amato. And here's the thing. I, I, I spoke with D'Amato early this week and said, look, Phil, I was disappointed that she did not win last time out. Talking about legs galore. That was two successive defeats by legs galore, both of them in five eighths races at Del Mar. And what D'Amato said, and it really makes sense. Yeah, she got her front running trip in both those five eighths races, but her best lick is six and a half down the hill. Five eighths at Del Mar, you have to run fast all the way through. Legs Galore runs fast because she is a front runner, but coming down the hill, six and a half, she can ration her speed more efficiently. She can coast, it's downhill for much of the race, coast on the front end. There's no other speed in this field. Legs Galore should get a long front running trip and she should be long gone. I'm not sure this late in her five-year-old campaign after 17 starts, nine career wins, I'm not sure that she is as sharp as she was earlier, but I'm not sure that she's not either. Here's the thing that bugs me about backing legs galore at short number in the Cal Distaff. There have been nine downhill turf sprints this autumn at Santa Anita. None of them were won by the front runner. It's a sprint race. Wouldn't you suspect that by now, after nine races down the hill, at least one or two or three would have been won by the pace setter. None of them have. The downhill turf course has been favoring stalker pressers and deep closers. Well, legs galore is none of the above. She's a front runner. I think she's going to win the race anyway. She's the best horse in the field. D'Amato said she's training well. She's back doing what she does best. She's two for two on the downhill turf course. She should 
should, in air quotes, win this race. I'm just not convinced that she can or will carry her speed. And I'm not convinced if she look, if she was five, six to one, I'd love her, but she's not going to be. Her odds are likely to be short, legs galore. And I she's not the type of favorite that I would bank on. In multi-race wagers, I would also be using Eddie's New Dream, Clean Karma, and maybe Rose Dawson on a deep saver. But look, when all is said and done, they still have to catch the favorite. That's legs galore in race three on Saturday at Santa Anita.